Hello again everybody, this is John and Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Uh, today we're going to continue doing uh, a video on a specific uh, sport, if you will, or type of training. You know, we recently did one on running. Um, you know, originally when we thought about doing we kind of thought it's kind of gimmicky, but then we thought about it a little bit more and realized, well, you know, there are some specifics to uh, certain sports and, and training types. So today we're doing one on CrossFit. For those of you unfamiliar with CrossFit, um, you can go to CrossFit.com. They post all their uh, daily workouts there and basically the idea is is fitness you know it's people who are going to train across all energy systems there's metabolic conditioning workouts there's Olympic lifts there's some gymnastics in there um, there's some power lifts a little bit of endurance and I'll just read you real quick from the website just some insight on their intent of CrossFit um, CrossFit is in large part derived from several simple observations garnered through hanging out with athletes for 30 years and willingness if not eagerness to experiment coupled with a total disregard for conventional wisdom. And then they go on to give, you know, like 10 observations as to why they do the things they do. I personally have been doing CrossFit for a while. I know you've done it from time to time. Um, you know, and, and people use it to supplement their training with other sports. You know, you're seeing, you know, NFL players now tweeting about doing their CrossFit, CrossFit. workouts. Mm -hmm. And really it's been popularized by MMA. You know, I personally compete in grappling, so I feel it helps me best with that. So, um, when you talk about CrossFit and a lot of people do it, you know, the, the, the big diet that you hear people talk about is the paleo diet. Mm -hmm. You want to explain a little bit about the paleo diet and then we can get into where supplements can help, you know, play a role. Okay, yeah, the paleo diet looks at uh, our diets as, as we've evolved and they said that the past 10,000 years is, is there was the agricultural revolution and, and what we have nowadays and prior to that was uh, more of a whole food um, focusing on um, meats and I should, yeah protein and um, fruits and vegetables basically so within each meal would be um, a protein um, some you know fruits and vegetables while eliminating grains from the diet um, and in some cases dairy there are some people who follow paleo, paleo who include dairy but if you want to go to the strictest form it, it, it just discludes uh, all dairy products so it's really just you know what a lot of people and athletes eat nowadays is just protein and, and healthy vegetables and, and, and some fruit. Yeah, a lot of people will find that they already do a lot of this in their mm -hmm. diet. You know, they eat almonds and walnuts, mm -hmm. they eat meats. And I think the big thing, too, from the strict adherence to it is the kind of meat they eat. Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to eat grass fed meats mm -hmm. as opposed you know, to you know, grain fed meats, which is you know, much more common. Um, you know, they're going to eat healthy fish, you know, wild mm -hmm. you know, sockeye salmon as an example. So you're going to see some of that as well. Um, and, and some of those foods are not as easy to come by, so that's where exactly. you know supplements come into play to supplement what you're missing in your diet. Especially like for instance, for those who don't um, take in dairy, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, probiotics are still going to be needed. So if you're not taking in dairy, be it uh, yogurt or milk, and you know the argument for those who do, for the most part, people at least we know that do paleo and stuff. Um, the dairy that they do take in is raw. Right. So that means it hasn't been pasteurized. So even when you buy pasteurized yogurts, they're adding in probiotics after the fact, but the counts are going to be relatively low yeah. compared to that of a probiotic. And the uh, argument is that a, a, you need a probiotic in order to return your gut to a healthy flora, if you will. The bacteria that live there, which helps with your immune system, um, you know, di digestive uh, health in general, you know, you know, the acetophiles that will be in there to help your body produce more acid. You know, I mean, we hear people with... Um, you know, problems like GERD and heartburn and mm -hmm. stuff, and, and really the idea is actually you, you need more acid, actually. Yeah. The, the, the treatment of it to, like, preface it is actually the opposite of what you really want to cure it. It treats the symptom, but it certainly doesn't cure it. Yeah, all you ever hear is, uh, oh, I need to be less acidic, I need to control the acid in, in my intestines and stomach, and and, and, and in all actuality, that, that's not the best if you're shutting that off. Your body needs that acid to break the food down and then where it can get into the intestine. Your body has the hydrochloric acid pumps for a reason because, you know, you, you need it. And the bacteria, the microbes, actually help digest foods and break them down. And the byproduct of some of them is that acid. So um, th that's something to keep in mind, too. Um, and the other thing with the uh, paleo diet, just because I know there's going to be people who say, oh, they don't like it and stuff, and that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to debate it. We're not here to say, hey, you know, do the paleo diet, don't do it. We're just explaining it because it goes along with CrossFit. Is the other thought behind it, too, is that the environment around us, the foods around us have evolved faster than the human species because one of the counters that people commonly say is, well, you know, we've evolved. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a long time for humans to evolve, and that's kind of the argument from that side of it. So. Yeah, they're, they're looking at data that says, you know, millions of years 
you know, we ate a certain way, and then for the past 10,000 years we've eaten the way we have now. With the advent of ag agriculture and the advancements made uh, with grains and high fructose corn syrup and things like that, so that's sort of what they're comparing there. Sure. And you need some of that too, mm -hmm. because we have so many people in the world now, and people need to eat. So yeah. there's some logic behind doing some of the things that has happened to our foods in order to increase shelf life. But if you have the opportunity to eat these, you know, grass-fed meats and you know, shop the perimeter of the grocery store, if you will, if it if it came from the earth, then that's that's what you eat. But that's not an option for everybody, um, and especially not all the time. It's very difficult to do. So that's where supplements come into play. Supplements help supplement the diet. We've already brought up probiotics. Um, another thing is protein powder. Mm -hmm. um, athletes who are training hard, you know, CrossFit, like I said, a lot of them are supplementing CrossFit to help them train for another sport. Or if you're just doing CrossFit, you know, you're going to need enough protein to help build muscle. And sometimes if you're on the run, it's hard to grab a steak or something like that or you know, just get enough protein in your day, so that's where protein powder comes into play. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're wearing down, breaking down the, the, the muscle that you've, uh, that you've built, so your body's going to look to rebuild that muscle, and it does so with protein. So yeah, and important. a common question we get is how much protein you need. You know, that's going to depend. I mean, typically what we say is anywhere from three quarters to a gram of your goal body weight. So if somebody's 300 pounds and they want to get down to 200, well, you know, eat around 200 grams of protein if that's what your goal is. And you hear people say, well, based on lean mass. And just to, to make it simple, you know, it's just about three quarters quarters to one gram per pound of your goal body weight. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also for some people this might be a weight gainer where there's some yeah. carbohydrates with it as well because you know you may need extra calories because you're not getting enough in your diet. Also with the protein powder you can make smoothies so you can stay on your paleo in the sense that you can add fruit, mm -hmm. you know, frozen fruit, you can eat yeah. almonds or walnuts with it, it's easy to bring a shaker with you, shake it up and drink mm -hmm. it, so. Just to stick with, you know, if you're doing it with dairy, you do it with milk, if you're not, then you do it with water, so. Yeah, and, and the thing with these proteins, most of the ways, like the way I said, all the lactose is filtered out, mm -hmm. so. But that was, I think, the biggest concern with the paleo is that not the amino acid profile of the protein, more the lactose. lactose. So, so many people are lactose intolerant. And there, there are a lot of people who have allergies to milk and things like that. But, uh, yeah, there's egg protein powders. There's so many options now, and a lot of them taste good. So you can buy them naturally sweetened or artificial sweeteners. It depends. You know, whatever you're looking for, there's an availability. Um, next is a multivitamin. Mm -hmm. And again, a multivitamin is something that's it's going to help plug the gaps in your diet because of the modern diet and the foods that we eat. Um, you know, being you know, lacking, being devoid of a lot of these vitamins. Um, there was a study on the journal, the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Now, full disclosure, the people that funded the study were um, individuals who are, were coming out with a vitamin of their own, but the design of the study still made sense, and they found that um, individuals tend to lack uh, certain micronutrients. They had six of them that were common, which is vitamin B7, vitamin D, vitamin E, chromium, iodine, and molybdenum. Um, so that's what they found was relatively low or non-existent, and they used a few different diet plans. They used Atkins, South Beach, DASH diet. Um, now, granted, like, as we said, the paleo diet is different, so we didn't have any you know, research we could find specific to that, to say, hey, so-and-so, you need X vitamins or whatever. But as we said, a lot of the foods are going to be devoid, so if you can't eat that strict diet, that's where a multi would help. You know. Yeah, and especially if you're a hard training athlete, uh, you're, yes. you're going to be sweating out a lot of these vitamins, and your body will need extra of these vitamins to meet its uh, metabolic demands. Yeah. So th that's where taking a multivitamin would come in. Sure, yeah. If you're eating perfect, yeah, you could probably get by without it, but you know most people don't. So um, next is, uh, and these are not in order of importance, by the way, because the next one I think would probably be amongst the most important, which would be omega-3 fatty acids. Um, you know, we talked about you know people eating you know cold water fish mm -hmm. and great, but again, it's hard to do every day, and more and more, because of the foods in our diet, we need more omega-3s because there's an imbalance between so omega-6 and 3s. Yeah, our diet nowadays is, is very heavily pushed towards the omega-6 fatty acids, um, so especially within the paleo realm, their emphasis is to correct that balance. They, they want to get it to more to a you know, a, a four to one, a, a two to one, or a one to one ratio. Whereas, you know, there's some information that says we're at like a 10 to a 20 to one ratio. Yeah, depending upon the person, yeah, that's yeah. gonna be off. And omega-3s are so important because what they do is they convert to eicosanoids in the body. Eicosanoids are these, they're, they're basically powerful super hormones. They control your CNS, uh, that's your central nervous system, your immune system. Um, you know, if you look at the brain, the brain is largely composed of these fats. Uh, you know, mostly DHA is what you're going to find. Mm -hmm. um, the company we have up here is Minami. Minami has a really cool process for how they actually clean the oil, because no matter what fish oil you buy, they're going to have to clean it. Mm -hmm. And they use something called uh, supercritical CO2 extraction, which sounds like a silly marketing term, but it actually makes sense. They're not, basically, they're not heating up the oil. And they do a two-step process, so the amount of omega-3 you get in one capsule is going to be much higher. Most omega-3s, when you look at them, 
you know, it's like a, it's a one gram mm -hmm. uh, capsule, and you're lucky if you get three, four hundred, mm -hmm. you know, milligrams total. of total omega threes. Well, in this, uh, you're getting total in in one soft gel, uh, one point one grams of actual omega threes. So, mm -hmm. and they're higher on EPA. Um, reason being is EPA can be easily converted to DHA in the body, plus it more easily passes the blood brain barrier. So they have a lot of really interesting research on it. Um, so we did do specific videos on Minami uh, fish oils where we go more in depth, but we can't overstate the importance of omega threes and how helpful they are from joint pain, you know, reducing inflammation. I mean, you name it. There's plenty we can go into on that. Um, and along the lines of a protein powder recovery shake, mm -hmm. like you said, some people want a faster acting protein. Someone's going to get in your system a little faster with some carbs if you're on the run, something like that. So we don't have one up here, but recovery shakes or something else that people can find help with. Uh, next is creatine. Glenn, you want to cover creatine real quick? Yeah, creatine is, will allow you, it gives you some energy. It provides extra ATP in the body. It lends a phosphate group to what's called the adenosine diphosphate, which is uh, normally circulating in the body. So it lends a phosphate group, creates ATP. ATP is your cell's natural energy source. So by taking creatine, um, they can work on the, the fast twitch or the, the um, the glycolytic, uh, glycolytic or the phosphagen system. Or the phosphagen system, yes, uh, which is you know better suited for uh, higher intensity, quick, short bursts uh, of energy. So if you're someone who does marathons and things like that, creatine may not have much of a benefit uh, for that race. Uh, but if you're doing short bursts of uh, of quick movements and things like that, that's where creatine comes in. Yeah, you, some people like for the runners will use it for their training, mm -hmm. but as the race approaches, they'll get off of it because the extra body weight might slow them down. But your Metcon workouts and stuff on CrossFit, you'll really see a benefit in explosiveness. So. Uh, next, beta alanine, which is along those lines. Beta alanine is there to maintain intracellular pH, so the acid that dissociates from lactic acid uh, needs to be buffered. You know, at some point, it's going to create such a burn that you can't, you know, continue on. So that's that burn you feel is that acid that dissociates from lactic acid, and that's where beta alanine comes into play. Our, our liver naturally makes some. You can get some from food, but you could also supplement a lot more of it. And there's actually been a lot of really good research, you know, right up there with creatine now in terms of the performance enhancement of, of beta alanine, so we're yeah. big on that. And, and beta alanine is, is not only for those short bursts of energy, but for the long term. So yes. people doing longer uh, workouts or, or, or longer runs. It, As that acid benefit. accumulates mm -hmm. in the body. So um, Another one is vitamin D. We recommend vitamin D as an individual vitamin, specific, uh, vitamin specifically. It's actually more of a hormone than it is a vitamin. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you name it, immune system. Um, immune system. Um, brain health, testosterone health, uh, yeah. there's so many, m numerous studies coming out on vitamin D now and it's important. Yeah, there was actually a good slideshow on WebMD, you know, uh, which was a, it, it's a more mainstream site, if you will, uh, one that's not likely to post stuff as m frequently about vitamins, mm -hmm. but they put one up and they talked about, uh, each slide talked about a different study that, you know, proved certain things with vitamin D. You know, if you go out in the sun, yeah, you'll produce vitamin D, but if you wear sunblock, you know, your ability to produce vitamin D is reduced by about 95%. And also, skin color plays mm -hmm. a role in that, too. You know, the darker your skin, the less efficient you are at producing vitamin D, because the thought is, if your ancestors are from near the equator, they're going to get plenty of sunlight. So, mm -hmm. because of that, their body quells the ability to produce vitamin D, at a, uh, vitamin D is a greater of a rate, whereas the further north your ancestors are from, you're going to be better at it, because you may only get 15 minutes of sun in a day. So... That's something else to consider. Yeah, that's another thing that within the realm of paleo that they do talk about is they do recommend getting some sunlight. And, and for a lot of people, that's just, uh, you know, it may not be possible because of where they live or, or the amount, um, you know, they work all day like or that. something short. So that's where taking in a vitamin D supplement is going to help. And out the well. amounts, too, have been increased in terms of what they're recommending. Um, you know, anywhere from two to 5,000 IUs, you know, depending upon where you read. So um, vitamin, can def vitamin D can definitely be helpful. Typically, it's going to be D3. Um, you don't see too much D2, but there is a lot of benefit to D2. That's typically because D2 is the one that you can, you know, overdose on. Now you've got to reach very, very high levels to get there, so it's not really a, a big concern here. Um, next, we talk about stimulants. Um, stims can help get you going for your workout. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the extent of <clears throat> what they could be for. Yeah, especially for a, a CrossFit type workout, knowing that you're going to be doing a you know, pretty high intensity <coughs> exercise or asking your body for a lot of power output. If you worked a long day and, and you're dragging afterwards, taking some stimulants could, could definitely help. Yeah, mm -hmm. and with stimulants, we always say give your body a break from time to mm -hmm. time because you don't want to build up a tolerance to them. They become more effective as you give yourself some, a break from them. Now, to prevent withdrawal headaches, you can do something like a cup of green tea or half a cup of coffee. On days you don't take your stimulants, and typically we're talking about pre-workouts when we talk about stimulants, the pump, the nitric oxide boost, you know, we're still skeptical of that. Mm -hmm. It's been proven, it's, it works in theory, but not in practice, so that's something to consider. Um, 
You know, next uh, is just some joint products in addition to omega-3. A lot of people like a product called Wobenzyme, mm -hmm. specifically. Um, it's, it's basically some enzymes to help with inflammation. There's some decent research out there that shows it helps your body with its natural inflammation response. So if you're training hard, doing a lot of jumping and stuff, as you would be in CrossFit, that's where you can see some benefit there. Yeah, I, I myself have used it. I know it's very popular with, with people who have joint injuries or, or things like that. And um, it, it is popular, and it's a natural alternative to... Uh, NSAIDs, uh, you've got you know, like your ibuprofen, uh, acetaminophen, um, aspirin. Yeah, if you're popping those all the time, there's always the side effects, if you will, mm -hmm. of you know, necrosis in the kidneys or you know, uh, you know, liver toxicity, anything like that, depending upon which one you're talking about. So it could be a good alternative at least to try. Um, and then final is calcium for females, um, typically, just because a female diet off times, you know, again, if you're not following paleo or what have you and you're doing CrossFit, Calcium tends to be a little, because of not only the endocrine system, but also just diet for females. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, unless you're eating a lot of um, uh, cruciferous vegetables or um, taking in a lot of dairy, um, especially for women, you're probably going to be lacking in that, so that's where that's important. Sure, and sometimes people get muscle spasms a lot. Try mm -hmm. a little bit of calcium and see if that helps quell it, because sometimes that's a cause, too, of why you're getting that on top of being dehydrated. So the bottom line is, is the healthier you are, the better you're going to perform at any sport. Um, be it CrossFit or anything else. So that's where all the supplements and, and a good diet come into play. We always recommend diet first. You've got to eat clean. You've got to eat good. And as we said, supplements just make it easier to fill in those holes in your diet, those gaps. Plus there's some performance enhancing things like beta alanine, like creatine that we discussed. Um, also, one other thing is, is gluten-free. Isn't that a big part of paleo as well? Yeah, eliminating grains. Uh, by doing that, you're also going gluten-free because they're uh, you know following some... Some science that shows that you know gluten is a protein that can't be tolerated by a lot of people. It's wheat uh, protein, yeah, is what it is. Wheat protein that can't be tolerated by a lot of people. So, uh, for people with a lot of underlying digestive issues, by eliminating gluten, it's shown that through their own research that it's people have improved. Yeah, people just with you know there's different levels of it. You know, mm -hmm. people with celiac disease is, is the disease that's called. It's you know endurance problems. You know, eliminating mm -hmm. gluten has improved endurance problems for some people. Um, others, it's, it's much more severe, so it really depends. You're starting to see more and more supplements that are actually gluten-free. Mm -hmm. Well, they're just actually just putting it on the label. Same thing with foods, you know, yeah. like for instance, it's gluten-free on the woven sign. Well, it's probably always been gluten-free. It's just that now that people are looking for it, mm -hmm. a lot more companies are able to, you know, post that on the label and stuff. So. Yeah, more and more people are becoming aware of that because sure. I know a lot of cases of celiacs don't go, you know, go undiagnosed and, and, and people just sort of adjust themselves to it as much as they can. Um, but yeah, you'll probably see that on a lot of labels now with uh, gluten-free and things like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So I hope you answered all the questions and we're able to go through it um, You know, for people doing CrossFit. If you guys have any questions, if we missed anything, uh, please go ahead and post your questions in the blog or in the comments section of the video. We're more than happy to answer them. Also, check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you. Thank you.